Hello, Wonder Hussy here, driving along the world famous, gorgeous, million dollar highway of Colorado. This is a windy, twisty, narrow highway that winds through some of the most spectacular mountain scenery, sort of outside uh, the town of Silverton, I guess between Silverton and Durango. That stretch of highway is called the Million Dollar Highway, I think because they mined a million dollars worth of gold and or silver up here. But it could just be because the views are spectacular and the scenery is jaw-droppingly gorgeous. And so maybe that's why they call it huh, the Million Dollar Highway. Either way, I got some intel that there's actually a hot spring hidden at the very top of the Million Dollar Highway, right off the side of the roadway but because it's mislabeled on Google Maps, apparently, well, not that many people are able to find it. And I guess it's mostly used by the locals. But I got some pretty good intel from a friend, some GPS coordinates from uh, looking at Google Earth. But first, I gotta navigate this highway safely and find a safe place to pull over and park. Okay, hold everything. <sighs> I got to where I had pinned to park, and then I hiked up to where I had the hot spring pinned. And sure enough, there was an amazing hot spring right there where I expected it to be. And it was full of really nice hot water, clear water, nice gravel bottom. It was an excellent soak. But there was a big sign posted next to it with the name of the hot springs and it said it was on private property, but that the, the landowners allow people to use that hot spring as long as you abide by a few simple rules. No pets, no alcohol, no glass, no pooping. Please pee 50 feet away from the hot spring. You know, all very reasonable requests. And so I was just getting ready to take off my clothes and go for a soak when I read the very bottom of the sign, which said something like, please, 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 don't post photos of this hot spring on social media or share their location. Because if the hot springs start to get too crowded, then they might have to shut them down. The landowners won't allow people on them anymore. And so I thought, oh gosh, I drove all the way out here. I mean, this hot spring was literally one of the main reasons I came to Colorado. I'm not even kidding. I was so excited when somebody told me about this place because I thought, wow, a hot spring that I had never even heard of. This is so cool. And there, I think there was only one video. Somebody else went to it on YouTube and it just seemed like a really cool kind of secret place. And I wasn't going to give away the location. I was still going to keep it very anonymous and mysterious like I always try to do. But after reading that sign and the way they said, please, 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 three times, don't share photos of this place on social media. Well, I would have felt like a real jerk doing so. Even if I did obfuscate, you know, the location and this and that. I mean, the and at the end of the day, they're on private property. The people who own the property are being cool enough to let me soak there. So I'm not going to go flaunt their rules by posting photos of it on YouTube. That being said, I still want to go soak in it. Uh, I just feel like... I have to figure out a way that I can justify the expense of driving all the way out here. And so I'm making this video, which is probably not very much fun to watch. Um, I'm going to go soak in the hot spring. I'm just not going to shoot any footage of it. And so you'll just have to go by my description. Okay, I'm in the hot spring, but I framed the shot in such a way as to cut out as much of the background as possible. And I don't think anybody could figure out where I am just based on this dirt slope behind me. Anyway, uh, since I can't show you this hot spring, I can at least kind of describe it to you, I guess. Uh, it's, well, it's actually kind of like one big rock lined pool with a pretty good flow coming out of the middle out of a pipe, it looks like. It's almost like a fountain. And the water's not very hot, I guess. Oh gosh. I'm putting my foot in the pipe right now to feel the source. I mean, maybe a hundred degrees, probably not even, probably like, mid upper 90s. I am soaking naked. There's that sign with a bunch of rules on it and it doesn't say anything about no nudity. It just says, I think this is kind of cool. It says, behave modestly when others are present. 
That's very interesting and ambiguous wording. Behave modestly. I feel like modesty is kind of subjective. I mean, for me personally, I don't consider nudity to be prurient at all. I'm happy to be naked and have a conversation about, you know, Cracker Jack with anybody. Um, it's not necessarily sexual to me, but I know to a lot of people it is, and nudity makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. So I guess that's what that means on the sign. Behave modestly when others are present. I guess that means put on a swimsuit if other people show up. I'm gonna read you what the sign says. It says the name of the hot springs are on private property, but we're happy to share them with you, provided the following. No pets, no glass, no alcohol slash intoxicating substance use. I guess that means marijuana. No use during snow season because there's an extreme avalanche danger. We're on the side of a very steep hill, so yes. I mean, as a matter of fact, I forgot to mention the view from this hot spring is spectacular. I mean, I'm looking out at gorgeous, like almost looks like the Swiss Alps mountain scenery. Uh, you can probably hear a lot of traffic noise in the background. That's because we are right off this million dollar highway. But honestly, it's no bother at all. It's kind of fun. I can see the bikers riding along. I can even hear the classic rock blaring from the speakers on some of them bikes. Bob Seeger, y'all. Anyway, uh, no use during freeze thaw or rain events because of rock fall danger. No exploring above or around the spring due to open mines and unstable slopes. So basically they just, they're just trying to cover their butts because this is private property. But to that end, there's also a thing that says, this is pursuant to Colorado statute 5334-11103, limitation on la landowner's liability. I guess it's some thing in the code that allows you to let, let commoners like me use your land, but I won't be able to sue them if I get injured, which I think is completely fair. I like that. Okay, so anyway, after all the uh, know this, know that, and then it says, leave no trace. <laughs> I think this is good too. Peeing in the woods is fine, but please go 50 feet away from any water source. Okay, that's common decency. You think most people would know that, but apparently they don't. Poop elsewhere, which I think is funny. And unfortunately, again, you'd think that would be common decency, but I have encountered my fair share of human turds near hot springs. Again, no pets. They really don't want you to bring pets here. And I understand that I'm not a fan of dogs at hot springs. And I know it's a very polarizing subject. A lot of, a lot of people who are into hot springs also have dogs and love to bring their dogs to the hot spring. And one guy I know, well, he'll put his dog in the hot spring because she's got arthritis. No, don't put your dog in the hot spring. That's disgusting, man. First of all, dogs have dingleberries on their ass hairs. I mean, that's not to say that many people don't have dingleberries as well, but no smoking, pack out all trash. Do not use soap or other bathing products in the springs, which I guess soap or shampoo will uh, mess up the ecosystem and I don't know, like destroy the hot spring. I, I don't use soap or shampoo in hot springs either. I'm, I do abide by that, but I'm kind of like, oh, really? what does it really do? But hey, this is their hot spring. I'm not gonna wash my hair or anything while I'm in here. I'm just gonna, I'm just soaking naked and making this video, which I hope doesn't piss off the landowners because I'm looking at your photo right now. You do look like nice people and then, Golly, man, it's just, this is the hot spring YouTuber's quandary. Okay, God, this fly won't leave me alone. It's probably a drone fly. It's the family. They have this, these mechanical flies with cameras in them and they, they wanna see if any YouTubers come up here and take pictures for social media. Just kidding. Uh, anyway, what I was gonna say is, yeah, this is the, the hot spring YouTuber's quandary. I don't know how these other channels do it. I've seen YouTube channels where they go to the hot spring and they show you the name of it. And they show you the way to hike down to it, how to drive to it and this and that. And there's all this badass drone footage. And I mean, some of these channels have hundreds of hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers and views and golly, here I am just piddling along at 200,000 subscribers after five years of doing it, six years even. And I feel like it, it does really hold me back that I. I don't say the name of the hot springs I go to and I don't provide any or minimal identifying information. I know some people might quibble with that and go, man, you're the biggest blabbermouth there is out there. In fact, I know one guy in particular who hates me because, oh my God, it's a long story and I'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, I'd have way more views and probably more subscribers if, sorry about your drone guys, 
if I uh, was able to say the name of the hot spring and provide logistical information, but that I wouldn't want to do that because it's true. These hot springs do get overcrowded with gross people who don't pee 50 feet away from the water and they don't go elsewhere to poop and they drink and they smoke and they have sex in the hot spring. They bring their dogs in and they leave their garbage all around and they camp right next to it. And Man, I have seen some pretty grim behavior at hot springs in my day. So I understand why people get really upset uh, with me for even making videos of hot springs because my MO is I like to make the video and leave out as much identifying information as possible, but you're still gonna be able to see the background and whatever. So if you're a really dedicated hot springer and an adventurer, there's generally enough information in my videos to where with some work, you can figure out where they are. But I don't make it easy. I don't make it easy at all. I think anybody who really watches my channel would agree with that. But of course there was this one run-in I had two summers ago. Uh, I stumbled on a hot spring and unlike this hot spring, that one was on public land. It was on BLM, Bureau of Land Management, our public lands, the land belonged to me just as much as it did to anybody else. Well, it was listed in that hot spring guidebook that I use. You know, I've shown that guidebook many times called Hot Springs and Hot Pools of the Southwest. And then there's one Hot Springs and Hot, hot Pools of the Northwest. And I have links to those in the description of this video. They're great guidebooks. This hot spring is not in those guidebooks, but this one that I went to two summers ago was. And in the, in the guidebook, it really didn't look like much. It was just kind of like a muddy ditch. Uh, and the description was like basically a muddy ditch in the middle of a cow pasture. It's too hot to soak in, you know, might be worth trying to dig out, blah, blah, blah. Well, I happened to be going up that way anyways. Some, somebody actually brought it to my attention and goes, hey, have you ever been to Blah Blah Hot Spring? I was just looking in the book and I see that it's in Nevada. And I said, oh no, you know, I haven't ever been to that hot spring, but I'm kind of going up. Well, I was going within a hundred miles of it and that's how Nevada is, it's remote. And so I thought, okay, it's only a hundred mile detour. I'll go check it out. Well, those, those was two years ago when gas wasn't so expensive, only a hundred mile detour. So I did, I drove all the way out to that hot spring and uh, I was in a kind of a funky depressed mood, which I kind of am right now too, to be honest. There's a lot of parallels I'm drawing between this experience and that experience. I was in a depressed mood at that time because I was in a really, or I had just ended a really bad relationship. Like it was really toxic. The person that I was in the relationship with was frankly emotionally abusive and very belittling. I know, why would I be in a relationship like that? I still don't understand, but I was, but I had just ended it. So I was really feeling depressed and bummed and headed out on this solo expedition. And the first, very first stop was this hot spring that was in the book that I had never been to. And when I got there, it was incredible, okay? It wasn't just a muddy ditch. Some people had gone in very recently and made significant improvements to it. I mean, I guess I can go ahead and describe this now uh, for reasons I'll get into in a minute. I walked up to the hospital. You have to kind of like hike across this cow pasture and climb over this fence. And it was this whole rigmarole. But there was BLM signs everywhere saying hot water, use at your own risk, blah, blah, blah. So I figured, oh, okay, cool. Public hot spring. Awesome. But when I got to it, some people had come in and built a, a wooden deck with four claw-footed bathtubs on it and each bathtub was painted a different really cool funky color scheme i think one had like pennies glued all over it like really neat bathtubs and there was even like hooks to hang your bathrobe on the tubs were plumbed so you could just turn on the tap old-fashioned claw foot bathtub taps hot 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 water i mean that one was gosh the water coming out of there must have been like 105 106 it was hot so you could fill the tub and you had to sit there for a minute wait for it to cool down but then you could soak on this beautiful wooden deck in the middle of this i mean yeah it was a cow pasture and it was in the middle of nowhere when i say nowhere i mean even by nevada standards that place is remote uh but you could just soak there under the stars or it was daytime when i got there i, I ended up camping i spent the night and I, I soaked during the day or at sunset i soaked at night it was amazing and there was a really cool chest that there was like a, a, a trunk that when you opened it up there was like solar lights in it so you could hang up like christmas lights if you wanted there was a beautiful leather bound book so you could sign your name that you'd been there man it was amazing and so i spent all day all night soaking i drew this beautiful picture in the book about how much i loved the hot spring oh they had a kind of like a, a tortoise motif there was little tortoise 
uh, accents everywhere, little stone tortoises, and the book had a tortoise on the cover. So I drew this beautiful tortoise inside the, well, beautiful to me. I mean, I took up a whole page of the book and like half of the ink in that pen to draw this crazy psychedelic thing about how amazing that hot spring was. And I wrote all about how much I loved it and I was in a depressed mood when I got here and this really just restored my faith in humanity. Well, anyway, I had to leave eventually and so I did. The next day I packed up and left and start editing the video. And editing these videos is very time consuming. I mean, for me, it takes me at least a full like eight hour day to edit a video typically. And since I was traveling on the road, I didn't have a full eight hour day. So I just did a few hours here, a few hours there. Whenever I had Wi-Fi, I tried to do it. And I had just about finished the video when I got an email from the guy who built the hot spring asking me, oh, please don't post a video. Oh, because I had posted a picture on Instagram, a teaser, like, hey, video coming soon of me soaking in this badass bathtub. And he saw that. He was like, can you please take that picture down? We don't want anyone. Uh, we were hoping, you know, nobody would post any pictures of this place for, you know, at least a year. And so I was like, oh, okay. Well, I took the picture off Instagram, but then I was like, damn, I already spent all week editing this video. What am I going to do? I need to have something to put up on Wednesday, and that took all my time. And so I emailed him back. I'm like, okay, totally cool. I took the picture off Instagram. I understand. Listen, with my videos, I don't say where I am. I didn't say anything about where I was in the video. It's totally anonymous, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he, he was cool. He goes, okay, well, let me talk to my friends who helped me and see what we, they think. Well, I didn't hear from him for like four days. So I thought, well, all right, I guess they're okay with it. I'm just gonna go ahead and post the video. So I finished it and I was just getting ready to upload it when he did email me back and say, hey, sorry, we decided we don't want anyone, uh, we don't want anyone to post anything uh, for at least a year. Ah, all right, I made a whole video complaining about that at the time, talking about my quandary, because I do consider myself to be a moral and ethical person. I don't want to be a jerk or an asshole. Like, I could see how much time, money, and effort those people had put into that hot spring. So, I had to respect their wishes. I didn't post the video. I waited until a year went by, and then I went, okay, well, it's been a year now. He said he wanted to wait a year until anybody posted. it. So, I finally reposted or uploaded that video. And it didn't get that many views, but next thing you know, he was on one of the hot spring websites talking smack about what a jerk I was and how some people are, do anything for likes and it's true I mean I do make YouTube videos for a living so yeah in a sense I do do things for likes but that hot spring experience in particular was really emotional for me because of the shitty mood I was in and the crappy relationship I had just gotten out of stumbling on this magical hot spring it just it made me feel so much better about myself and the world that's what I was trying to share with people more than the spring itself I mean yeah don't get me wrong the surreal experience of stumbling on these bathtubs in the middle of nowhere was definitely part of it but I was I de it definitely wasn't made with the intent to make money and views it was really just made for me to share my appreciation at the wonders of this world with people and I know that sounds corny and probably disingenuous but it's true I get emails all the time from people who are unable to leave the house because they're they can't afford gas or they're you know, uh, disabled or they're sick or whatever. A lot of people live vicariously through YouTube videos. And so I actually do get a lot of enjoyment and I feel pretty good about being able to share things with people who will never in a million years be able to come out to those places, let alone trash them. But you really can't explain that to people like this other hot spring dude. And I mean, I, I kind of don't blame him because it does sound real airy and fruity and like, oh yeah, sure. You're doing this as a public service. Well, I'm not, again, I'm not making any bones about the fact that I do earn a living from YouTube, but... Anyway, he was talking smack about me on this hospital website, so I go, hey man, I logged in, I go, listen, I'll take the damn video down, you said you were hoping, a y it's been a year, you know? But okay, I'm happy to send you all the money I've made off this video, which I think it was only $340 or something. I'll send you all that money and you can use it towards your next hot spring rebuild. No, I don't want the money. Ma so I just took the dang video down and it has remained down until this day. At this point, I guess the whole scene, for me, the whole experience is water under the bridge. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I still feel a little bit sour about, it. that guy was just so mean. He assumed, he immediately assumed I had the worst motivations and I guess it hurt my feelings. And at the end of the day, I am a very sensitive person, which is not a good thing to be sensitive if you wanna try to be a public person but I am. Anyway, that was that whole other hot spring experience. And this experience today kind of reminded me of the same thing because for whatever reason, I just started feeling kind of gloomy the last few days. I think part of it is my trip is almost over. I have to go back home in a week and 
Oh, just some other things going on in my life that I won't get into. I mean, maybe I should get into all this personal stuff. You know, I always try to keep things positive on my YouTube channel and be cheerful. But I've noticed there are other YouTubers who use YouTube as a platform to complain about their problems. And apparently people like watching that stuff. So maybe I should be honest about the fact that I'm not always cheerful. In fact, I do uh, suffer pretty bad depression sometimes. I'm just pretty good at keeping it under control by going out and exploring and making videos and sharing things with people. That's a big part of how I keep my depression. That black eyed dog at bay is just by keeping busy and YouTubing. I know this again probably sounds really corny, but making YouTube videos and doing all this stuff, it helps me stay cheerful. I mean, it's seriously <laughs> preserving my sanity. I mean, Depression runs in my family. My dad even committed suicide because of depression. I'm not saying that I'm considering suicide, but you know, it's a serious thing. Uh, gosh, why did I even start talking about depression? Oh, well, this experience. Yeah, I've been kind of depressed lately. And I was, you know, I, I woke up this morning kind of like, all right, well, I'm going to go find this hot spring. And that, this will be a cool video because it's an adventure. I kind of knew where it was, but I wasn't sure. And so it was going to be fun. And it's in a beautiful area, and as I was driving along, I took GoPro footage of the drive, and then I got out of the car and started the hike up and investigating, and like, oh, here comes, here's the hot water, let's follow this up, blah, blah, blah. And then I got up here and I saw the sign and went, huh. <laughs> and I could feel the black-eyed dog come sniffing around again, but guess what I told him? No dogs in the hot spring, shoo. <laughs> Actually, no. I sat and thought about it for a while. Like, well, first I thought, well, I could just go ahead and still make the video anyway. What are they going to do to me? I mean, yeah, they could send me a nasty email and they might even be able to send a cease and desist letter to insist I take the video down um, because it is private property. But no, I wouldn't do that. I would just feel terrible about myself. The sun's coming out. Uh, so then I thought, well, yeah, I could just, you know, give up abort mission and go do something else. But man, I'm already depressed. If I give up on this, then I'm really going to be depressed and Oh, I don't want to be depressed anymore. I want to be happy again. So this is what I decided to do and mm, I guess I feel okay about it. Okay, anyway, I wasn't even done reading the sign. It's very interesting to me the way the sign is phrased. Then they go, no camping, but please use hipcamp.com to reserve nearby designated sites. Behave modestly when others are present, no fires, rock hounding, mining, hunting, fishing, foraging, cutting wood, etc. And then check this out. It says, when our family is here, please respect that we want to use the springs privately. Here is our picture. And then there is, there's a color photo of them soaking in this hot spring. I think they're sitting right where I am. Husband, wife, four kids. They're all smiling. I mean, oh my God, I'd be smiling too if I owned this property. It, hot springs aside, it's just absolutely gorgeous here. I wonder how they were lucky enough to get this place. Anyway, the last thing the sign says, other than that uh, Colorado revised statute about limited liability, it says secrecy. Please, please, please don't post pictures of the springs to social media or share the lo their location. Because of social media, the spring's usage has increased exponentially in recent years. If this secret spot becomes too popular, we might need to close access in order to protect it. And again, I totally understand what they mean by that because, well, what I already went into about people pooping and peeing and having sex and doing all kinds of gross things. I mean, I've seen some things at hot springs, let me tell you. So I, I understand and I respect that. Um, I guess people have posted pictures of this on social media. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they don't consider me one of those people because, again, looking at the background here, you'd never be able to tell where I am. And moreover, I don't think very many people are even going to watch this video because it's just me sitting here complaining about <laughs> the quandaries of being a hot springs YouTuber. All of that being said, well, there's no sense in shooting any more footage here at this hot spring. Matter of fact, I'm actually getting kind of chilly because it's only whatever 97 degrees which i don't understand why anybody would come here in the winter season anyways oh my god you freeze so i'm just gonna end this video and i'm gonna roll on to my next destination which is a ghost town that is well marked on every map and tourist brochure so i should be okay to say the name of that place